So, there are two videos circulating on the internet about not being trans enough. And, uh, one is by Ryan and another by Chase. I will link to them in the sidebar thingy. Um, basically, I want to make my own video about this because uh, I'm not necessarily someone who's accused of not being trans enough very often, but I identified with a lot of the things that they were talking about in their videos. And I kind of wanted to make this to show that there is no such thing as being trans enough. We are all trans enough. And we should probably stop gender and identity policing, because that's kind of something that we are all generally against anyway. Um, so I thought, here are five reasons why I um, could be considered not trans enough by some people. Um, starting with number one, um, I didn't always know that I was trans, didn't always know that I was male. Um, a lot of people appear to know everything that's up with their gender identity when they're like three or five or, you know, pretty young. Um, yeah, I didn't. Uh, first off, I didn't really think about gender or bodies or identity or anything when I was a kid. I mostly thought about how to avoid having social interactions with other people and how to play Pokemon. <laughs> um, I, I was just kind of a tomboy, but I also wasn't super masculine. Um, I was just sort of a kid, I guess. Um, and then when I was a teenager, I identified as a lesbian. I had short hair, wore boys clothes, etc, etc. Uh, but I also didn't really know that much about trans issues. I guess if I looked back, I, I mean, it would be kind of obvious, like, I did write a uh, story. I wrote a lot when I was like a teenager, a lot of emo stuff. Um, but I, I wrote a, a short story about a girl who felt like she um, was male and like had to work through all of that. And in retrospect, was obviously a trans man. <laughs> um, but I didn't really know all what was going on. So, <coughs> sorry, it's my girlfriend in the background. She's sick. So, um, I, I kind of figured everything out when I was, like, 18, um, almost 19. And, uh, you know, I was, like, a freshman in college, taking women and gender studies courses, being on the internet more, because I was a college student with more time on my hands, and thinking about myself and finding myself and everything. But I want to say that, um, even despite knowing myself so well when I came into college and, and having, you know... Uh, short hair and men's clothes and, you know, being androgynous and pretty much genderqueer. Um, I still bought bright sh pink sheets, bright pink blankets, a bright pink lamp, everything for my dorm room. And for the first two weeks, totally tried to reinvent myself to be this really feminine woman. Uh, it didn't last, but even then, like, I was still trying to live up to other people's expectations. And I was pretty clueless for a long time. And so, uh, I'm, I'm definitely not one of those people who knew from a young age. Um, so, number two, um, I have no plans on getting bottom surgery. And I know that that's pretty common among trans guys, but um, I probably wouldn't get bottom surgery even if it were perfected. Um, I mean, maybe. I don't, I don't know. And um, I guess it's kind of uh, controversial whether or not it's been perfected or not. But, like, if, if I could... Um, I guess if it were, uh, the equivalent of, of taking a pill and waking up in a completely cisgender man's body, I don't know, like, I would actually have to think about it. So I guess that makes me not, you know, trans enough to some people. Um, but number three, I have trouble with math, so I'm just going <laughs> Number three, um, I'm not too terribly masculine. Um, I'm not terribly feminine either, but, um, if there were a rule that you had to like sports and violence and action movies and, um, you know, be really good at video games and math and all those things, I would fail at all tests of masculinity. Uh, I'm not athletic, I'm not, uh, not very masculine. So, uh, yeah. 
I like talking about my feelings and reading and playing The Sims. So, okay, I'll, kind of along with that, number four, um, four. I do not have very many male friends. So a lot of other trans guys out there appear to be friends with a ton of guys, only get along with guys, whatever. I get along more with women, um, partially because I'm attracted to women, maybe? I don't know. I like hanging out with them. And uh, I find men to be kind of, well, before I transitioned, I found men to be kind of cliquish, and I felt out of, you know, like I couldn't get into that group or something. But now it's just like, well, a lot of my friends were women before, a lot of my friends are women now. So it's okay with me, I guess. I mean... I've been kind of on a mission to make more male friends just so, uh, because I've noticed that it's kind of unbalanced how many female friends I have versus male friends, but, um, I, I mean, I had a lot of male friends when I was a kid, like, more than female friends. I actually got in trouble when I was in elementary school for not hanging out with girls, which I don't even know how that's legal to get a kid in trouble for, but, you know, whatever. But then in high school, I just started hanging out with more women, and then in college, I met a lot of women who were really cool and in the social justice scene, and um, I had a lot of lesbian friends because I identified as lesbian. And, uh, yeah, so I have lots of female friends. Um, number five, um, a lot of people would consider me not trans enough, I think, because I identify as having been a woman and as being trans instead of a, a man. Um, a lot of people online will be like, yeah, I was never a woman. I was always a man. I was born a man. I was just, you know, in a woman's body or, you know, using that kind of language. And um, that's fine. I mean, other people feel that way. But, um... I have lived the majority of my life being seen as female in society and being treated as such. So I had the woman experience in a lot of ways. Um, primarily, I am of the trans experience because that is how my life has been. That's the experiences that I've had. But if someone came up to me and they were like, we need the male perspective, I would feel like I couldn't really get to them. Um, because I've only been living as a man in society for, like, one to two years, so I would have trouble with that. I identify as having once been a woman. Um, granted, I see myself as being male on the inside. Um, and I am, you know, living as male. I'm comfortable being male. I p intend on being stealth someday. Um, and just living as a guy. But, um, I'm also a trans man. That's my life experience. That's how I identify. And, um, other people don't identify that way. But, um, like all of the five things that I've talked about, those things don't make me less trans. Those things don't make other people less trans. Feeling the opposite way doesn't make other people less trans, or more trans, or anything. I mean, all of this. It's, we're all equally trans. It's not a competition. And, um... There are people out there who are completely different from us, but have an equally valid identity. And I think that's important to keep in mind, is we should respect each other, and um, we're kind of all in this together in a way. So um, even though we're all pretty different, and sometimes it can be hard to understand other people or feel like they're in the same boat as us, but they are. So, uh, yeah. No such thing as trans enough.